So my name is Claire Kinlaw, and I direct innovation commercialization for the largest not-for-profit plant research institution, the Donald Danforth Center in St. Louis. And why you ask is a research institution in the business of helping commercialize innovation. And it's because our mission, uh, we're a 20-year-old organization, our mission includes the need to have impact from the science and discoveries that we make. And we've had a strong commitment to the ag innovation ecosystem in St. Louis and, and broadly uh, are, uh, across the country and around the globe. And what I'm going to tell you about today, it's a little bit of a, a change up from the topics we've had so far. We manage a program in partnership with corporate philanthropic funding from the Wells Fargo Foundation. Um, essentially to validate early innovations in uh, agriculture technology. We do that with their funding and our science and infrastructure. So I'm going to give you, um, I'll give you some details about the, the, the program that we run, but if you take nothing away uh, other than this, if you're an entrepreneur in the audience, if you're an investor in the audience, if you're a stakeholder who interacts with worthy ag innovation companies, the program we manage may be of interest and value to you. So please uh, take the opportunity to come talk to me during this um, course of this conference. So we were, the Wells Fargo Foundation and uh, their initial partners, the National Renewable Energy Labs, wanted to have an impact on, a positive impact on the environment with their corporate uh, philanthropic funding. And they looked to fill a gap for very early stage companies whose risk is still very troubling to investors. The technical risk is still very troubling to investors and very, um, problematic for customers. And what we provide with Wells Fargo Foundation funding is the, the research around, the validating research around that early technology from a very highly respected uh, plant research institution. Wells Fargo National Renewable Energy Lab and the Danforth Center are the partners. We are the technical partners for the ag track. There is another whole track that we don't need to talk about today uh, which the program was founded on for commercial buildings and housing, um, all with the eye towards impacting the environment favorably for energy consumption, water quality and quantity, um, soil, air, etc. Okay, so on the ag track side, uh, we are plant a plant biology research institution. So innovations need to have some need to uh, explore plant biology, plant imaging um, for performance, something like that. We've had uh, to date and probably will continue to have essentially three very large areas. And I would argue that most innovations in agriculture, whether the, the entrepreneur um, owns it or not, probably still does need some plant biology. Um, so, so that's where we can come in um, to be helpful. But big buckets, anything to do with plant science, anything to do with crop uh, in, in enhancement, crop performance, and then anything to do with um, sensing and uh, decision making through software, hardware, et cetera. Okay, the program is about five years old. It's had a strong impact, uh, a, a, a reputable reputation on the commercial building side. We're only a year into the agriculture side, so we'll track um, how well we do in terms of follow-on funding for the companies, um, exits, all those kind of standard impact uh, metrics. So for a, from a company standpoint, the experience within this program is, uh, starts with an onboarding experience. There's a project. It's unlike any grant opportunity that, that you would normally apply for. The entrepreneur doesn't actually propose the specific project they're going to do. They propose an aspiration. And there's a mixing of the minds between our science, our capabilities, and, and where their company needs to go. So there's a bit of project scoping in the middle. The project gets locked down. They, they roll through the, the program for about a year. There's opportunities for some follow-on funding, definitely f uh, relationships for field beta testing. Um, and we, um, and then the third option for companies in the program is that they simply flow through the program and, and, and exit. Okay, so I've, I've, had, I've had a couple conversations and people ask me, what's the right stage for companies in this program? And it's, it's really broad, it's early. It's, it's early enough 
it, it could be a second or third track of product for a company that has some traction in the market. It could be a, a full-blown, very early startup. It has to be a startup company. It can't be a, a university or academic institution project. It has to be a full-fledged commercial entity before they can come into our program. But we have companies in a, in a range of actual early stageness. Okay, we, we take a long time to select the companies because we take seriously whether or not we can have a positive impact on them. Starts with a technical review at our institution for what we can provide with our science and our facilities. It also gets reviewed by the funder, the, the current single funder, the Wells Far Fargo Foundation for adherence to their mission, very broad environmental benefit. Um, and then there's a final external advisory board that does a critical analysis of does the company have um, at least an initial credible sort of business model uh, to work on? Um, uh, are they coachable? Is there a market for it? Those kind of standard criteria that an entrepreneur would be tasked to defend um, if they were seeking other kinds of funding. We are more than a grant opportunity for the uh, entrepreneurial companies. We are also an ecosystem builder. So uh, in their wisdom, the, uh, the program funders have take seriously building the ecosystem. And so the companies are referred into the program. It's not an open, open solicitation. So we're always on the look for channel partners. So again, my call for investors and stakeholders who deal with entrepreneurs uh, at, at some quantity. But there, there is a carrot for, for working with us, and that is there is a, um, uh, an initial tiny award of $5,000 to the channel partners and then the opportunity to compete for a, a somewhat larger um, $100,000 uh, award to do pretty much anything that's creative and credible for uh, enhancing the ecosystem in which that channel partner resides. Okay, so here's just a, a, a quick map picture of where our current channel partners reside. We are, by and large, a US domestic with some Canadian um, connection to date. There's no, there's no um, reason that the, comp the program couldn't uh, expand globally, but it, it probably won't uh, in the next year. We have gathered our channel partners together, and they tell us that it's uh, sort of a fruitful opportunity to network and continue to build this whole ecosystem. So this is just an example of having uh, the most recent channel partner meeting that uh, we convened this year. So there are about 30 companies in the, in the current portfolio that have gone through the program. The ones highlighted in Tangerine are the first cohort of ag companies. Um, again, uh, the, the ag track is only uh, one year into its uh, existence. And I'm going to tell you um, a little bit about the first cohort of companies. Here they are presenting at uh, one of the premier ag innovation conferences um, that was held in St. Louis this year. So the first company in the cohort, just to give you a little bit of a flavor of the range of ag innovation that has come into the program and that we would anticipate would be relevant and would get value from the program. Acre is in the precision agriculture world. They have uh, investment. Of, um, they're an early company, but they have credible investment. They have uh, customers in the big ag companies. They are a pest scouting technology uh, using a variety of things, everywhere from satellite type data down to drone data uh, uh, and creating um, uh, field validated um, um, uh, prescriptions from digital imagery of observable pests to give farmers uh, an opportunity to intervene into pest management or actually in uh, pretty close to real time in a season um, on farm. They, that, they have this technology well developed for insect pests. They wanted to bolt on and explore the opportunity of, of uh, going into disease type uh, pests. Um, so we are working with them to validate and to um, compare the technology that they think is promising for its ability to actually um, feed back from the imagery or the sensing 
what the actual pest is in the field so that a farmer could do something about it. So the whole environmental potential of this company and this project is again, it's go, getting back to what one of the earlier speakers said about we're going to be manu we're going to be managing down to the plant instead of the acre. So you have to be able to sense down to the plant, and we are going to have the real capacity to use all pesticide compounds, whether those are biologic and expensive or chemical and troubling to the environment, in much lower doses and much more effectively. So the right amount of stuff delivered to the right plant at the right time for the right impact. Covercrest is completely different than Acre. They are a crop uh, domestication and a crop commercialization. They're a cover crop to go um, into mid, uh, Midwest uh, commodity fields in between corn and soy plantings, both for the soil benefit, but their uh, ingenuity is around the business model to actually produce a crop that will make it uh, easier for farmers to adopt this environmentally beneficial crop because they will get, it will be easy for them to do so and they would get an additional profit from having that third crop in the rotation. What we're doing and the environmental impacts of cover crops on soils is quite well documented. The project that we're doing that for them is twofold. One is anytime you start planting any plant in some um, high density or uh, in large acres, you are going to attract pests. It, it's a pipe dream to think that you can plant something anywhere in large quantities that will not attract pests. So you have to get ahead of that curve. And so we're helping them identify uh, biological solutions for some of the pests they anticipate and have begun to see. Uh, but furthermore, we're helping them with some cutting edge um, essentially crop breeding technology so they can, they can um, exquisitely time the uh, point uh, in the season where this cover crop would uh, mature and could be harvested and be way out of the way for the next crop. Again, making it commercially beneficial for the farmer. Uh, Intrinsics Bio is also a biologics beneficial biologics company. This company actually um, has a suite of microbes um, that um, will help crops, they, 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 they colonize crops and they help crops um, essentially fix nitrogen from the atmosphere. So legumes do that, but that's an exquisitely um, host um, uh, re react, um, relationship with the microbes that takes a whole modification of the plant to make specialized structures, et cetera, et cetera. This, these are more generalized microbes that take up residence inside the plant tissue, but still allow the crop and uh, a wide variety of crops, non-leguminous crops, to benefit from that ability to take nitrogen from the atmosphere where it's abundant but not usable to most crops. And uh, again, uh, eliminate the need for such large quantities of um, costly and environmentally questionable uh, chemical fertilizers. Renaissance Ag is the newest company. This is actually a spin out from the Danforth Center. It is also a biological pest management um, product. It is in the arena of um, something called RNAi. It's, uh, it's a very um, environmentally uh, um, uh, neutral kind of compound to replace a variety of, of very human toxic kind of uh, chemicals that have been applied across uh, uh, agriculture acres. And we're, what we're doing for them in the research project is helping them speed up the uh, way that they can screen for their products, so fast, uh, large-scale screening so that they can, put multi they can put, continue to put products into the pipeline. And finally, the last company is a material science company. They are a glazing for trans, uh, clear um, materials. Uh, so, uh, the, and this, this particular material has the property of absorbing full spectrum white light and shooting out more narrow bands of wavelengths of light that plants um, can uh, actually utilize to do photosynthesis. So it, it's turning light into an input like any other nutritional compound. Um, and we're helping them uh, develop, again, fast screening of their products by doing the screening on photosynthetic uh, algae. I'm gonna skip talking about the Donald Danforth Plant Science Center. I've told you about our mission. 
Um, I'd be happy to tell people more about who we are if, if you don't already know. But again, if you're an entrepreneur and investor or you deal with a lot of uh, worthy entrepreneurs in this whole ag innovation space, I would really uh, love to talk to you during this conference. Thank you very much. <laughs>